What's going on everybody, my name is Tatro and today I wanna to break down for you my latest live beat making session. Let's check it out. First things first, if you didn't watch the full session, you can go ahead and click up here and check it out. Come back, watch the tutorial. And also, we have a new sponsor today, which is really cool because if you guys notice, I've been trying to put out more and more videos lately, and the sponsorships are what makes that happen. So today's video is gonna be brought to you by Dashlane, but let me give you guys a quick walkthrough of the controllers that I used for this session, and I'll tell you more about Dashlane in a minute. So if you're fans of the channel and you've been around for a while, you probably recognize this setup. This is one of the very first setups that I ever used on this channel and that's minus the light pad block. Light pad block hadn't come out when I started this channel, but I've got a launch key mini where I'm playing most of my musical ideas and also using it to record. The record button comes in really handy here. I've got the launch control, which handles a bunch of different master effects, filters, beat repeats, turns my kick on and off. And then I've got the launch pad mini Mark III that I use to launch different clips. The Rolly light pad block here is actually used exclusively for playing drums. So every controller in this setup is here for a really specific purpose and is set up a certain way with the live session. But before we dive in too deep on how this is all set up within Ableton Live, let me tell you about Dashlane, the sponsor for today's video. All right, so if you use Gmail or any kind of Google accounts, you can do this security check thing. And Google decided to give me this really scary notification the other day, telling me I had 50 compromised passwords. Now, I didn't even know I had 50 accounts, especially us music producers. We have accounts for every brand of gear that we get. And it can be really frustrating when you're trying to update a library and you need to log into your account through whatever the software's dashboard is and you forget your password. So I've done away with that problem by using the Dashlane app. And what Dashlane does is it will store all your passwords and also help you create secure ones so that you don't have to actually remember a super random selection of numbers, letters, and symbols, and case sensitive and all of that. It also has a really useful autofill feature and then you can also save your payment options so that you can have really fast checkout no matter where you're shopping online. Now you can use Dashlane completely free, no strings attached on a single device or you can upgrade to premium to use it for multiple devices. Today for my subscribers, you can try premium free for 30 days with no credit card info needed. You can just check it out, try it, see if you like it. Like I said at the top, sponsors like these really make it so I can spend more time creating tutorials for you guys. So if you have a minute, it would mean a lot to me if you checked out the link down below and just checked out Dashlane, even if it's for the free version and let me know what you think. All right, let's get him back to the tutorial. Okay, so this is what the Ableton Live session looks like when I'm just starting the session. There are no recorded clips in here. The clips that you see are the ones that I start off with. So I usually like to play as many of the musical ideas as possible in a session like this, but I keep some loops here so I can improvise and also change up the groove. I start with this shaker loop, which is keeping time for me so I know where the downbeat is, so I know how to record in my loops. I use this knob here in the launch control to toggle the send delay, which alters the groove of that shaker a little bit. All the way to the right here, I've got a row of clips that are basically all one-shot samples. What you'll notice here is that when I'm triggering these clips, they're not waiting for a downbeat. They're not synced up to the global launch quantization, meaning they just come in when I press the button. And that's achievable by going to an individual clip, heading down to this little launch box here, and you can set up the quantization. Usually it's set to global. So my global launch quantization is one bar meaning that all my loops and recordings will start on a downbeat, but I set these to none so I could just play them like one shots. And what that does is it gives me a layer of atmosphere, but also a layer of improvisation that doesn't require me to go and arm a track or a drum rack and have a controller 
take over that drum rack. They're just always here on the launch pad for me to play. And then of course the rest of the loops you see are different drum grooves. You'll notice also on my Launchpad Mini here, the bottom row is strictly for stopping clips. I think that's a really key function here of the Launchpad. And that's pretty much the Launchpad Mini's job here. I launch clips, record clips, and also trigger these one shots. Taking out drums and adding in new drums is a way to change up the structure of your track that's just as easy as clicking on the clips and launching them. Now let's talk about the MIDI sounds that I have and I'll show them to you in order that I played them on the track. So I actually have set up some dedicated arm buttons on the launch control here. The reason for this is because I could use this shift button here. I could be just scrolling through tracks, automatically arming them. The only problem with this, if you notice I'm armed on track two, the drum rack, right? Now, if I cue in another clip, what happens is it tries to arm that track whose clip I launched, which I don't want. I mean, it's super convenient to automatically arm tracks with the launch key when you're using it by itself without a launch pad. The only way to get around this is to hard arm, meaning you have to physically press the arm button. So I've assigned these buttons here on the launch control to arm individual tracks, and you'll see that going across. And then I have this one for the vocals. So the first sound here is a really nice keyboard sound. Play it lower than that. I really love how it sounds. This is a Diva preset. So this is the Juno Jupiter 24 Mellow Piano. And I believe I have turned up the attack a little bit from the original preset, but I really love the way it sounds. And that's a chord progression that carries through the whole track and it's really the backbone of the track. From there, let me go ahead and arm my drums. I've got a couple drum samples and I have them dedicated here on the Rolly Light Pad block. I could have just as easily used the drum pads on the keyboard, but for one reason or another, I just liked having a dedicated controller. I didn't have to do any switching at all on here. I just knew that the Rolly Light Pad block was dedicated to drums, and this is so small that it just fits in this setup super easily. So that's pretty straightforward there. The next sound that comes in is the bass. Let's take a look at the preset here. So this is another UHE plugin. This is a Repro 5 song, the XS Essential 80s Saw. I really like just kind of plain basses like that. It's got a nice snap to that attack. So I felt like it fit well in this track. The next sound we've got here is, oh. And that is a vocal sample. I mean, really simple. We're warping it, we're in pro mode. Attack is turned up, so we have a nice smooth fade into that sound. Let's talk a little bit about some of these effects here, and to kind of demonstrate them, I'm just gonna record a drum loop. All right, so to record in a live session like this, it's really simple. Ableton Live is automatically set up with a global quantization of one bar, meaning that every downbeat, every one, your recordings can start, stop, or play. So when I hit the record button, it won't start recording immediately when I push the button, it'll wait until the next one. So this is why I listen to drum grooves to help me keep in time with my track, especially when starting. So if I play this drum loop, I hear a downbeat. So I know when I hit record, 
the recording will start on a downbeat. So I'm gonna go ahead and arm my drums and start recording. The loop also stops recording on a downbeat so I get a nice even drum loop. Works the same way for stopping clips. Three, four, one. Stopped on one. One. Stopped on one. That's basically how live looping works in Ableton. It's not the same as a stomp box or a pedal like people are used to. You don't start and stop creating the time yourself. Ableton has its own clock and tempo that you adhere to. So to demonstrate some of the effects I've got here, let me just play that drum loop again. First effect I've got is this knob here, which controls a redux on this track. Controls that down sample knob, which almost has this, this scratching sound, like vinyl scratching. Not quite, but it almost has the same effect. The next effects I have are actually on the master. So I've got a high cut, a low cut, and a quick note about this low cut and the high cut they are mapped to a simple EQ3 on the master. Right here. So you can see that when I change high cut, the gain high changes. When I change low cut, the gain low changes. Notice that they stop at zero. And I had to map it so that happens because if I don't change this in the MIDI settings, they will go to plus six and I don't want to overdrive the lows or overdrive the highs. I want to keep them right at zero. And you can do this by going into this MIDI menu here, opening up the side, and all of my mappings are here. And you can set minimum and maximum values for these. You could even reverse them and get creative, but for the high cut and the low cut, I've set the maximum to zero. So I can just crank that knob all the way up and know that it's gonna land at zero rather than trying to find where the space is between zero and plus six, like it default would. Let's talk about beat repeats. I use this on a lot of my tracks and a lot of people ask me about them. So I'm gonna go ahead and open some of these up and you can just copy these parameters exactly, but you can see the basic thing that has changed about each of them is the grid size. One quarter, one sixth, one eighth, and so on and then I've got them all mapped to this master rack here. And I've mapped the repeat button to an individual macro. And as you can see, this number here, the grid, correlates to the knob that it's mapped to. So this gives me another level of stutter when I crank this knob, and it's really just an on-off. Sixth, eighth, sixteenth. And that's really all it is. There's nothing too fancy here. You can go ahead and copy this exact beat repeat and then map one of your knobs to this repeat button here. The only other thing I have custom mapped is something I use about three quarters of the way through the performance, and that is the filter and the pedal dry wet of this synth here. And let me go ahead and physically arm that. You can hear that's really bright and harsh right now, but if I dial these knobs back, I've got dry wet and I've got high cut. This is kind of how it comes in in the track. You can almost barely hear it. But then as the track builds, this almost creates like a riser style effect because I record the loop at this setting where it's really muffled and hard to hear, 
and then I slowly build things up and launch my clips. So using that filter helped me create a lot of tension. It's a really harsh sound. So as I'm dialing in the highs and I'm turning up the dry wet of the pedal, it makes it even more harsh and it makes that tension just build and build. And I can use these knobs as a riser, like I said, to lead into the big drop. But that's the basic process of live beat making with this setup. I keep coming back to this setup because it's one of my favorites and it fits in this nice little pedal board. And the addition of the Rolly light pad block is really awesome too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you check out the sponsor Dashlane. You can get 30 days of premium free and you can use it just normally on one device for free anyway. No credit card required at all. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy, comment if you have any questions, and don't forget to subscribe if you like live electronic music performances, tutorials, and content to make you a more productive producer. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.